In this video, we're looking at the WCAG guideline 1.1 and success criteria 1.1.1, that's text alternatives and non-text objects, or as you might know it, alternative text. Alternative text is probably one of the most common accessibility standards we see used. And that's great because it's simple, it's quick, and it makes a huge difference. So let's quickly go over what the standards mean. Now, the guidelines 1.1 simply state that to help people understand your content, anything that is not text, whenever we talk about text, we're talking about digital text. This can't be captured inside an image. This needs to be actual typed out text in a text box or text container, depending on the software that you're using. This is important because only that kind of digital true text can be picked up by other assistive technologies, such as screen readers. And we'll touch on screen readers a little bit more later on in this video. With that in mind, it's important to note that there is actually a guideline in the 1.1 section of the standard that is not a success criteria. And that is offering sign language for audio content. Now, I'm of the opinion that this is something that's probably going to become a success criteria in the next round of revisions to WCAG, but you never know. There are a lot of considerations around practicality that go into this. The one thing I would really, really emphasise though, is this is a situation where it's important to know your audience. Alternative text is great, but if within your audience there is a group of people who would benefit from sign language for audio content, you need to really consider offering it. Whilst it is an additional cost, and naturally there is a, a skilled employee required to create that kind of thing, the technological consideration for adding it is really simple. It's just putting a video in the corner. If you use Storyline, you could create that using a state. If you use a tool like Evolve, you could use that with a simple variable option at the start of the course. It's really easy to add that in. So although it's not actually part of the success criteria at the current time, I think it's really worth considering in your content. So let's dive in to the success criteria 1.1.1, non-text content. So non-text content covers a lot of types of content. We're probably most familiar when we think about alternative text with images, pictures, graphics. But we also need to consider things like controls and inputs. If we're asking the user to input, we need to make sure there's alternative text on that input field. If we're going to have buttons and controls on screen, whether that's sliders, dials, flip cards, whatever it might be, we need alternative text for that. Time-based media is a fantastic example of something that is almost always overlooked. If you're going to put a video on a screen, first of all, as we all know, that video should not autoplay. The user needs to know that there's a video there, the user needs to have the option to play it or not play it or go to an alternative. That is largely down to alternative text. Attaching alternative text to the video to state, I don't know, video of Tom talking about alternative text. Then a button to play the video. Then perhaps an option to skip the video or view the transcript instead. That alternative text on the actual time-based media is really important for someone to understand what it is that they've selected in the order on screen. Testing and assessment is an interesting type of content when it comes to alternative text because there are situations where if you were to provide alternative text, you would actually give away the answer to the testing or assessment question. So in that scenario, we don't provide alternative text that would give away the answer or aid them or give them a leg up in answering the question. This does mean that when you're creating tests and assessments, though, you need to consider whether or not you really need to use types of test, types of assessment, question formats that can form an accessibility issue. And if you must use them, you also need to offer an alternative, i.e. the ability to say, I can't answer this question for an accessibility reason, please provide an alternative format for me to answer in. 
it's not very often we talk about controversial accessibility, but Capture is actually a really good example of this. Capture are those annoying little pop-ups that check that you are a human being when accessing something on the internet uh, or a different type of content. It might ask you to click all the pictures that have buses in it, or it might ask you to discern letters and numbers from a bit of a jumble on the screen. These are inherently poor when it comes to accessibility, but that's equally their strength in cutting down on bots and spam getting through to content. There's not really a good answer in this area yet, but luckily, in the world of L&D, it's not really something we have to concern ourselves with. The final group we may want to consider are decorative or purely formatting images. Things that really don't matter to the user experience or from a learning perspective. When we have these, we simply don't apply alternative text. I like to view this as, is this just going to get in the way and potentially confuse people if they are reliant on the alternative text to access the content? If so, make it invisible. On different platforms, this involves slightly different processes. In Storyline, there's a particular ability to remove it from the focus order to take it out of any kind of um, alternative text selection. In other tools that perhaps follow the more standard HTML5 sort of language, you tend to just leave the alternative text field blank, in which case it will just move past it. Some no-code software even give the option of marking something as decorative or needing to be invisible to user. This allows you to have it there on screen, but not come up in the focus order and not reveal alternative text. So those are the main groups of content, but it's really important that we think about the alternative text we are creating. Alternative text is not about offering an incredibly detailed visual description of what you are seeing. Alternative text is about providing as close as possible an experience for those who cannot see. Let's start with some informative images, images that are essential to conveying the information we need to give to the user. In this example, you can see the top of a medicine bottle, more specifically a safety lid. Perhaps in the text around this, we're talking about why these are used and what the benefits are. Here in the alternative text for this image, we might put, push the cap down and turn it counterclockwise and then in brackets, perhaps right to left. Now, this alternative text assumes that this image is essential to understanding the function of this lid. An alternative to this might be putting this information in the main body text and treating this image as purely decorative, which would mean not providing alternative text. You'll notice that in this alternative text, we do not describe the image. We don't tell the user what color the bottle is or what brand of medicine is inside it, because this is not relevant to the context in which this image has been used. Another commonplace example of informative imagery is when providing downloadable documents. We often provide a little image or icon to tell our users in which format the document will download. So, let's look at what we might put for one of those. Here, we have a logo for a HTML5 document download. The alternative text on this logo would simply be HTML. You'll notice we don't add a whole sentence stating that this document will be downloaded as a HTML document, or even this is a HTML document. We simply provide the meaning that the icon was providing.
Next up, let's talk about functional elements. I want to start with something that we perhaps do less of the time, which is logos or specifically linked logos or linked images. In these scenarios, we simply want to provide alternative text that informs the user where they're going. For example, if I were to put this logo of my own business, Evolve Learning Design, here on the screen, the alternative text would be Evolve Learning Design Home. That would tell the user exactly where they're going should they click it. You'll note that I didn't include anything like click this to go to or go to Evolve Learning Design Home. This is because screen readers will actually tell the user what kind of element they're looking at. In this case, they will likely say that this is a button or a selectable region and a user of a screen reader will then identify. So if I click this in their head, they're asking the question, where am I going? That's where the alternative text comes in. The alternative text provides the second half of the equation here. This same basic principle can be applied to buttons in all of our content, whether that's a continue button or a submit button. The screen reader will automatically pick up that this is a button or selectable region or area. The alternative text should say continue, submit, next, previous. Whatever the context of the button is, that's what should be in there. We should not be writing sentences such as click this button to continue to the next screen. An important group of visuals to consider, especially in the learning world, are complex graphics. Now, some of the most common examples of complex graphics are graphs, be that bar graph, pie chart, whatever it might be. Now, it is not reasonable or practical to fully explain a complex bar graph in the alternative text. But, what we can do is provide an understanding of what the graph is at a conceptual level and direct the learner to a long description. Now, a long description, as the name suggests, is a fully written, detailed explanation of all the data, all the information, all the insights present in the graph. This needs to be an option that the user can easily get to, usually via some hyperlink text next to or underneath the graph that is very simple, very clear, plain text should be kept as simple as possible. Think the same sort of rules we apply when we talk about video transcripts. So what do we put in the alternative text? Well, in this example, you might consider putting Bar chart showing monthly and total visitors for the first quarter 2014 for sites 1 to 3. This does not capture all the information within the graph, but does clearly explain what the graph shows. An alternative approach here might be to say, Bar chart showing monthly and total visitors for first quarter 2014 for sites 1 to 3 described in detail below. This gives a structural association between the alternative text and the image and the location of the long description. Arguably, this is the more complete alternative text, but you can only use this if that long description is right there directly below the image. This can impact the user experience of those not looking to utilize the long description and alternative text. Thus, it's become more popular to have a link to the side or below of the image going to the long description for those that need it. The important thing, as always, is that you consider your specific context, your audience, your users' needs, and follow the path that makes the most sense for that group of people. When using a group of images, it's sometimes easy to think of treating the whole thing as one area. When it comes to alternative text, this is not advisable. There are a few reasons for this. One, you cannot necessarily rely on their relative position to each other. 
If you have designed using a responsive tool, which of course it's 2022, we should be, um, then sometimes they might be side by side, but on other devices they might be stacked. In other devices they may appear as a 3x3 grid. You cannot reliably provide alternative text that refers to any specific ordering or organisation. Therefore, you need to provide sensible alternative text for each image. This will be supported on all modern authoring tools, but you must not provide a single piece of alternative text to cover multiple images. If an image is purely decorative, as we've previously discussed, do not provide alternative text. If it's informative or complex, you probably need to ask yourself why is it being displayed as part of a group? Is this actually going to confuse all users, let alone those reliant upon alternative text? If, however, you do need to display them as a group, then simply make sure that alternative text is provided for each image. In some situations, you'll need to combine things like informative and functional or perhaps complex alternative text strategies in one place. Great example of this is our use of image maps in e-learning. You may need to both describe elements of the image and provide information about where you'll go when you click on certain elements. Now this is usually very easy. It's unusual for complex graphics to get involved here because they will just get confusing for everyone. If they do, make sure you utilize long descriptions that are separate but easy to find, but really consider whether you need to do that. My advice would be to utilize a combination of functional and informative alternative text. Tell the user what they're looking at, a table or hierarchy of employees within the business, and then for each point tell them where they'll go when they go there. The CEO, the COO, those kinds of things. Short, simple, to the point. Again, the screen reader will do some of the heavy lifting for you here. It will tell them that something is a selectable area. It will tell them that something is a button or a range. You just need to make sure you're providing the specific context of what will happen should they execute those selection areas. So here, for example, I might provide an overall alternative text comment of board of directors and related staff and then a far more specific set of alternative text for the chairman or CEO. Testing alternative text is a really important part of getting it right. It's very easy to think you've created a very sensible, very functional set of alternative texts and also put them in a sensible screen order, but actually, Getting a screen reader and experiencing it will give you more of an insight than you could possibly gain just by looking at things in the authoring tool. I really strongly recommend NVDA for this. For one thing, it is free, it is readily available, and it is widely used. And in my personal experience, is actually pretty exemplary of what you'll get with most standard screen readers in the industry. Now, because it is free, or I should say has a free version, it's not got all the bells and whistles, it's not all singing or dancing. But for testing, it is entirely functional. I hope you found this video useful. Please let me know down in the comments what you're taking away, or if you have a different approach to alternative text, or if you use any different softwares to do it. I'd love you to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to support us further, please consider joining us on Patreon for as little as £1 a month.